And this is question 11. They say there, a rock is thrown up vertically at. Okay, so there it goes up. The initial velocity is 25. The first motion is upwards, so you choose up to be positive. And that is why the acceleration is negative 9.8. Now, when I set up this memo, or well, these memos 10 years ago, I did it and I chose down to be positive. Just randomly, I chose down to be positive. That is why the memo of some of them is negative and then you get a positive answer. Okay, so that's not the end of the world. All right, so <coughs> um, they ask you what is the maximum height that is reached by the rock and for maximum height you immediately tell yourself the final velocity there is zero. So the initial velocity is 25, final velocity is zero, acceleration is negative 9.8 and they want the height. So we do not have time, so you need a formula independent of time. And you get that to be <coughs> 8, 9 meters. All right. So that means that the rock goes up, 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 up. And that distance there is 31.89 meters. Now the ask at 11.2. Uh, what is the time that it will take the rock to reach 30 meters? So 30 meters is somewhere there. Is 30 meters. But remember the rock goes up and then it doesn't stay up. The rock also comes back down. So it passes the 30 meter mark twice. Mm -hmm. On its way up, it passes the 30 meter mark and on its way down. Sure. That's why there's two answers. All right, so we have there that the initial velocity is 25, the displacement will be 30. Can we say the final velocity is zero? No, because no, it's not the turning point. The turning point is at 31.89 meters, so we can't say that. Then the time is the question and acceleration is negative 9.8. So again, we need a formula independent of final velocity. It says delta y is vi delta t plus a half a delta t squared. So that gives you 30, 25t plus a half times minus 9.8 times t squared. And if you rearrange that, you get 4.9t squared. Minus 25t plus 30 is equal to zero. And that's a... Okay. Now that is not given to you in a test room exam. Okay. I see. Just remember it. 4.9, yes. Plus minus negative 25 squared plus 2 times 4.9. Ah, oh, sorry, thank you. Hmm? Sure, may this up my case where? And then you get 1.93 and 324. Okay, so you get two times, <coughs> and that is acceptable, that is assumed that we know should be true because the time uh, or it reaches the 30 meter mark on its way up and on its way down. Okay. So at question 11.3, they ask, why is it two possible answers? Because um, the maximum height is 31.89 meters. Thus, it reaches the 30 meter mark twice. On its way up and on its way down. First, 1.3 uh, 1.93 because that happens first okay. and that happens second. So, first, second. Here's.
But you do not have. Okay, can we go on? Yes. I'm going to start reading the next question. It says there's a helicopter that moves up at a constant speed of 4.9 meters per second. When it is 44.1 meters above the ground, it drops an object from the helicopter. Okay. Now can I see who struggled with this question? Okay. All right, so... Question 12 comes from a past paper, and about, it was two years ago, they asked this question in the June exam and the November exam, like this question, okay? So you can expect something like this. If it's not a helicopter, it will be a hot air balloon. If it's not a hot air balloon, it would be a bird. Okay, so this concept you must understand very well. All right, so... We have a helicopter, and they drop something from the helicopter, and when it was dropped, it was 44.1 meters above the ground. Now, they say the helicopter is moving at 4.9 meters per second. All right. So, when they say the object is dropped from the helicopter, what is the initial velocity of the... No, of the object. Okay, so there's your problem. It's not zero, but now it says it's dropped. Okay, let's play a what if game. Okay, Bukumusu, where do you go out after school? Like that way, that way. That way. Okay, Bukumusu goes out after school and she stands here on the outside and she's waiting, chatting with her friends. All of a sudden, everyone's gone, and a black BMW parks next to her, grabs her, pulls her into the car, and drives for Joburg. All right, and she's seen movies, she's heard stories, so she knows her life is in danger. And she thinks, I have to escape. All right, so she opens the door, and she just falls out the door to save herself. What's her initial velocity? Is it zero? No, but she just falls out the door. It's the, the, it's the same as the car. Because she's in the car, she has the initial velocity of the car. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, she's next to the road, she's fine, she whistles, someone comes, she's safe. All right, so the same concept here. Because the object is inside the helicopter and because the helicopter is moving at 4.9, mm -hmm. that object has an initial velocity of 4.9. So even though they say it's dropped, that is trying to fool you, mm -hmm. okay? It's dropped, but it has an initial velocity of 4.9. So that is a projectile. It's given an initial velocity. All right. That is why in the drawing you'll see the rock goes up and then it goes down a bit. Okay, so if you would just look, if you ignore the helicopter, you would see it goes jup like this. But if you put the helicopter next to it, because the helicopter is moving up and the rock is moving up a bit, you, it will look like it's standing still. It will look like a cartoon um, animation, whatever. Because it will look like it's standing still, and then it looks like it's just going down. But actually, because it has initial velocity, it goes up a bit, and then it's going down. Up the yes. All right. <clears throat> so that is why this is a tricky question. Because it has the initial velocity of 4.9. And because it goes up initially, we choose up to be positive. You can choose down to be positive, it doesn't matter. Then acceleration is negative 9.8. <coughs> yes, we'll get to that. Okay, so then they ask 1.1, uh, 12.1. What is the maximum height that the object will reach? Now, that is obviously the maximum height from the ground. 
Now we know it was dropped from 44.1 meters, so we want to calculate that distance and then add it to 44.1. Okay, so we are only going to look at from there to there. The initial velocity is 4.9, the final velocity is. Distance we want to get, time we do not have. So we need a formula independent of time. Yo, you guys are quiet today. What's wrong? <laughs> What? 1.225. Okay. So then you say the height above ground. So 1.225 plus 44.1. Now I know it sounds or seems silly to show that addition, but please show it. Because if you did some silly thing here, and you got it wrong, but you still show that you add that to 44. Yes. Then you get that mark. Obviously, if you subtract, you don't get that mark. 45.33. Uh, three, three meters. All right. Then question 12.2. said, what is the velocity of the object when it reaches the ground? So now you can look at one of two scenarios. Actually, one of three. You can look from the start to the end. Or you can look at the... Um, Maximum height to the end, or you can look at the where it passes its original position to the end. Okay, Rafilu, your choice. Which one? It's not difficult. Your question. Just say which option do you choose? What option? What did I just do? No. <laughs> so, no, which one do you choose? Okay, so she chooses from the maximum height <sighs> to the ground or to the final velocity. Um, can we, can't we just say the final velocity is zero when it reaches the ground? No. No, not no. They want the final velocity, but can't we just say zero there at the bottom? Because if you were lying there and someone is dropping a brick, <laughs> is the velocity zero when it reaches you? No. It has momentum, it has velocity. Why are you guys laughing? <laughs> yeah, you should. All right, the initial velocity there at the turning point is zero. The time we don't have, the acceleration is negative 9.8, and the displacement is what, Karabu? Okay, so pause the 45.33. No. Because we chose up to be positive, and because the rock is going down, it should be negative 45.33. Okay, so we do not have time again, so it's again this formula. So can you see, you can use the same formula over and over and over again because we have different scenarios. Enough. Uh, final velocity we want to get. And this is negative 45.33. And what do you get from it? Remember the square root? 29.81 meters per second. Positive. So is it going up? No. It should be negative, but we won't get a negative because it was a square. So you must remember because they ask, what is the velocity? Velocity is a vector. A vector has size and direction. So you must say this is downwards. Even though you get a positive answer, you must give the direction. Say again, yes, you lose a mark. All right. 
Then 12.3, they ask, how long was the object in flight or how long was the object falling? Neman. You have, again, three options. You have three options, Rufilu. <laughs> you can choose. Option one, the simplest option, is to look at the whole flight. Okay, once. Or you can say, I'm going to look at what is the time from there to there, and the time from there to there, and then add it together. Or you can say, what's the time from there to there, and then there to there, and add it together. But obviously, the easier one is the whole flight, but it really doesn't matter which one. So I say there, the whole flight. So the initial velocity is 4.9. The final velocity, we just got it to be 29.81. Is that fine, Bontley? It should be negative. So here you must be wake up because we didn't get a negative answer, but we know it should be negative. You tells well, you look so neat. You're like shaven, your hair is cut. It's like a a new man. Okay. Say again. What? Well. Um yes. No, it's going in the negative direction. If you say in horizontal, we say forward and backwards. But here we say up or down. No, yeah. As the previous no. said, why no. isn't the initial velocity 4.9? The, because we chose from the maximum height to the ground. If you chose from the initial velocity to the ground, then your initial velocity would be 4.9, but then your displacement would have been negative 41 point <coughs> what what. Okay. Um, then, what was the question? What is the time we want to get? And we know the displacement is what does what? Okay, this is different than what you did. You did it in two calculations, eh? So we are looking at the whole flight. So what is the displacement for the whole flight? Yes, because displacement is the direct line between start and finish. The direct line between start and finish. Displacement. displacement. Delta Y is displacement. And, and, and negative 45 so it's not It's from the hi maximum height to the ground. But we said we're looking at the whole flight. So we said we're looking from start to finish. That direct line. We are not looking at that direct line. And negative, because we're going in a negative direction. So it is negative 44.1. Okay, so careful what you choose and what you substitute. So here you can use any formula because we have most information. So I'm going to use the simplest one because I am lazy like that. Final is negative 29.81, 4.9 plus... And our fill weight is on it. Three point five four one five blah 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 seconds. Remember, if you get a negative, negative time, somewhere you did something wrong with directions. All right, now I know this was not a question. I'm asking this question now. My question is, draw a velocity time graph. Velocity time graph. Not people are going, velocity time graph. For the flight of the object. Okay, so when you start with it, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do a little bit. <clears throat> we know we go in the positive and the negative, so your zero line is there in the middle somewhere, and then you must have a table. And in your table, you must have the have at least two points. 
And you're going to ask yourself, what does the gradient tell The gradient tell you. Yes. Up on here? At the maximum height. Read the exit. What did you say? So when time was zero, the velocity was 4.9. We don't have the time when it reaches its maximum height. But we know when the time was, what did we just get? 3.54, the velocity was? Negative 29. <coughs> Then the next question you ask yourself is what does the gradient tell me? Gradient gives me acceleration. The acceleration here was negative 9.8. So you know you should like that. Okay. So here I'm not going to be very fancy and divide it up into blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to put in values. So at time zero, it was 4.9. So that's my one bullet point. And then at time 5 point, no, 3.54. It was negative 29.81. So you make dotted lines for there and there. And then you connect the two. So if you were going to draw a very accurate graph and they gave you graph paper, then you could have on and determine what was the time for the turning point but now we can't what they can ask you is what is the gradient of this line represent it represents gravitational acceleration that is negative 9.8 meters per second 
they'll work with your mistake. See so, yeah? They, they will mock with your mistake. All right. Yes? Now let's get to exam questions. Difficult, difficult ones. So, I hope you have your flip files here. I first want to go to the question that was in last year's question paper. Okay, now, I, actually, I'm wondering if they've uploaded the memo to this question paper yet. But, never mind, we're still going to do it. Yes. 50 marks. Chemistry for 50 marks. Okay, so we are going to attempt to do November 2023. And I handed, you all have a question paper. Ne? And this is question three. Physics, yes. Um, where will I find DBE? For the memo, I wonder if they've uploaded it. But anyway, all right. So they say that you have a building, and then they say a ball or whatever it is is being thrown up, and then it goes down, and then it bounces, and it reaches P. Okay. <clears throat> then they say there this height is 15.3 and they say this height there is 5.89 obviously mine is not drawn to scale okay then more information they give you is they say the mass of the ball is 0 0.5 kilograms they say this is the maximum height, so here the velocity is zero. And then they say it bounces and then goes up and they say the velocity there is also zero because it's also the maximum height after the bounce. No, they haven't put up the pass purpose yet. Zero point five. Okay, the first direction of motion is upwards, so we choose up to be positive. That means acceleration is negative 9.8. So I'll advise you in the test or exam, go redraw it for yourself. Okay, so that when the person marks, they can see where's your thought process and it's easier for them to mark with your mistake. All right, question 3.1. Sorry, first I say ignore the uh, effects of air resistance. Obviously, we will do that. Um, determine or define the term free fall. Free fall, there's two things I'm looking for. Uh, Is it an object or a motion? motion. It's a motion. So it's a motion of an object and the uh, only influence of gravity or gravitational acceleration or gravitational force. Okay, 3.2, they say with on, using only equations of motion, calculate the speed with which the ball was projected upwards. With which, so, want, so they want to know what is that velocity there. All right, so now, let's look, what scenario do we have the most information for? For that? Or for the whole thing? Let's just check, okay, for just that, we have the final velocity, we have the displacement, we have acceleration. So we have three things. Yeah, but mass is not in equations of motion. If we look at this thing, we have acceleration, we have the displacement, we do not have the final velocity. So we can't look at the whole thing, we're only going to look from the initial velocity to maximum height. So from initial velocity to maximum height. Okay, so our initial velocity is the question. Our final velocity is zero because it's maximum height. Okay. 
our acceleration is negative 9.8 because we chose up to be positive and our displacement is 5.89 positive because it goes up and we just up to be positive so we do not have time formula independent of time Yes, in my castle. Okay, remember, you're going to say that. That times that times that. Ne? Gives you a negative. Then you need to take it to the other side, it becomes a positive. meters per second and that is up with the for the speed speed is a scalar so you do not have to give a direction but if you had to it would be upwards okay so now we know that that velocity there is 10.74 okay now they ask a question 3.3 first they say that after the collision with the ground so after it has collided with the ground it leaves the ground with a speed of, so they give you there the velocity to be 11.92. They didn't say. Okay, now they ask 3.3.1. Um, how much kinetic energy was lost during the collision with the ground? Kinetic energy? momentum remember i said they can merge these things all right so what we must calculate is how much energy did it have there how much energy does it have there and then what's the difference how much did it lose okay but to get how much energy it has there we need to get the velocity there right to get the kinetic energy it's not the same they tell you it's not the same because they say energy was lost Okay, it's negative, but it's not necessarily negative that. We have to go calculate it. How are we going to calculate it? We can either look at the entire flight, or we can look at maximum height. What do you mean, Luke? Your choice. Maximum height. Okay, so he says maximum height. You can do the entire flight and see if we get the same answer. So he says, let's consider from the maximum height to the ground. For that, our initial velocity is zero because it's from maximum height. Fatima, what will our, uh, our final velocity is what we want to get? 
What will our displacement be? Um, it will be 5.89 plus 3. Yes, and negative. Yeah. 5.89 plus 15.3. And negative because it's going down and we chose up to be positive. The acceleration is negative 9.8 and we do not have time. So a formula independent of time, which is the same formula as what we just had. Twenty one point one nine. We're gonna show you on it. Yes? 379 to 38. Meters per second. And remember, it's going down, so it should actually be negative. Okay? All right. Now, that was not the question. The question was what is the change or the loss in kinetic energy? So, can you see that it reaches the ground with 20.38? And then it bounces back up with 11.92. So it loses a lot of energy. So it's a softball. Okay. So we want the difference in um, kinetic energy. Now you can do it in two ways. You can either say, what is the kinetic energy at the beginning, before the bounce? What is it after the bounce? And then subtract them from one another. Or I'm just going to do it one shot. I'm going to say, the change in kinetic energy is the final minus the initial. Okay, how do I calculate kinetic energy? That is on your data sheet, so you do not have to go memorize it. And can you see a half and m is common factors? I'm going to be very lazy and take that out. So that is 0 0.5. The final velocity, is that the final velocity? No, final velocity is after the collision. The one that goes up. Initial velocity is before the collision. It was what 11.92 squared minus minus 20.38 squared did you answer something yeah. no yeah, I did. Not. have you gone through everyone twice no, she did. But can we show your turn? Because it's going down. But negative squared is not there. Well, it will, it will be negative, yes? Negative. 68.31. Oh, what did I write on here? Negative six. Eight point three two. I get three one five. Whoa, whoa, whoa. okay, sorry.
Okay, so the ask what is how much energy was lost? That is why you get a negative energy, a negative answer, because it means it lost energy. So that negative there, and um, energy is a scalar. So it can't have direction. So that negative means that 68.31 energy is measured in joules energy lost. So that negative means energy is lost. It doesn't mean a direction, it means it's lost. Okay, then question 3.3.2, they ask, calculate the time that it takes ball P to, uh, it takes the ball, So I'm translating as I read, okay, calculate the time it takes the ball to reach point P after it has um, hit the ground, okay, so they want that time there. Okay, so we're going to take from the bounds, first bounce, bounce to maximum height. All right, the initial velocity, they tell us it's 11.92, maximum height, immediately right, final velocity is zero, acceleration is negative 9.8. And they want the time, so we do not have the displacement. So that is that easy peasy formula. Refilu. Are you ready? No, it can't be negative. Two seconds. Okay, then they give you this um, graph, and this graph looks familiar. We've seen that one before in our lives. Okay, and they tell you. Okay, first of all, you check. You see that it's a velocity time graph. Okay, I know mine is octagons. So, velocity time graph, you immediately ask yourself, what does the gradient? gradient. The gradient tells you acceleration. acceleration, and you can see it's a negative gradient. So, they also chose up to be positive. So, it's negative 9.8. All right, you can see the two gradients are parallel to one another. So, that makes sense because both is negative 9.8. Now, they say that represents the motion of the ball from the moment it's uh, thrown up until it reaches its maximum height after the bounce. Now, they ask, give the value of each of the following. They want a 3.4.1, the value of K. Let's check K. K there is a velocity of what? So, this, this was the initial velocity. This is the maximum height. This is the velocity with which it reaches the ground. Ne? This is the bounce. This is the initial velocity after the bounce. So with which it goes up. And that is the maximum height. So that K was given to you as 11.9. Meters per second. Okay, yes, this is the initial velocity. This is the maximum height or the turning point. This is the velocity at the ground. 
This dotted line represents is the bounce. This is the velocity after bounce. And then this is the maximum height. So this is maximum height one, this is maximum height two. Let's just quickly uh, finish. It says there 3.4.2. What is L? Where's L? There's the initial velocity. And we got that to be, I think, 10.74. And then 3.4.3, they ask, what is T2 minus T1? T2 minus T1. So T2 was 1.22 seconds. No, no, to go from there to there. We've calculated that to be 1.22 seconds. Do you remember that? So that is 1.22 seconds. All right. Uh, for tomorrow, either your, this book, if you have printed it yourself, or your phone, please.